chapter 3. Winston dreams about his parents and recollects the image of his huge and tall mother. On the other hand, his father had been a neatly dressed man and both had been vaporized on suspicion of hostility against the party. He dreams of his mother carrying his younger sister, whom he can barely remember. He dreams about what, he had, what had happened to his mother three decades ago. She loved him passionately, although he had been a selfish young man. His mother had seemed to sacrifice her life for his sake, and he feels that they are looking up to him from the grave. In his dream world, he finds himself in Golden Country, which is a beautiful and peaceful place. He also sees a beautiful dark-haired girl who runs towards him, pulls off her dress, and flings it at him. Winston wakes up, and the first word that comes out of his mouth is Shakespeare. Party members were given some privileges such as clothing allowances. He gets up, and there is a... There are jerking exercises directed by a female trainer from the telescreen. He joins in the exercise, but he has difficulty because he suffers from cough. During the exercise, he retrospects about his childhood when things were different. S Strip 1 was simply referred to as England, and he recalls that his country has always been at war, and there are intervals of peace. He recalls about an atomic bomb being dropped at Colchester. His family had taken refuge at the tube station. Other people had been hidden there. They were traumatized, and a man had just lost his granddaughter. The fact about Oceania's war have always been twisted by the party to suit their narrative. It is either they are at war with Eurasia or Eustacia. The party can twist something that happened and make it look like it never happened before. The party controls every bit of information and narrative because whoever controls the past controls the future. And whoever controls the present controls the past. Citizens know this because it is double think. Although Winston wants to accept party doctrine, his mind still asks questions. One of the realities that Winston cannot accept is the fact that Big Brother is the guardian of the revolution and has always been there, whereas he is a new element in the party. He is not even among one of the founding fathers. No one knows when the party came into existence. He has never heard about Ingersoll before 1930 because it represents English socialism in old speak. The party also makes citizens to believe that it invented airplanes, but Winston knows that airplanes had existed even before the creation of the party. As he retrospects and ponders on the troubling issues, the voice from the telescreen tells him to do the sporting exercises effectively and correctly. This chapter is very important because it focuses on the manipulation of information and the manipulation of history by the party to suit its purpose and ideology. It does this for the glorification of an individual, for the glorification of the charismatic big brother. The manipulation of basic information even concerning the creation of the pattern inversions highlight hypocrisy. It should be noted that the party has total control of every aspect of life of the people in Oceania to the point that the people do not even have individual lives. <laughs>